Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Doherty. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here at Red Hat Summit in JBoss World. And it's also great to follow uh, General Shelton and Jim. And I'm um, thinking, though, that, uh, that it also puts me in a position of maybe uh, the setup for a great joke. You know, did you hear the one about the general, the CEO, and the architect? So over drinks, I'll uh, look for the best punchline from the audience and a uh, $20 prize to, those, to whoever can come up with the best punchline there. But it is great to be here. And um, what I'm going to do uh, in the, the few minutes that I have here is just share a little perspective uh, with you, building on what General Shelton talked about and building on what Jim talked about, to give you the view of what I see happening around open source in the, in the clients that we deal with in the marketplace that we deal with and uh, give a little bit of a setup to, I think, what will happen here and some of the discussions that will happen over the next few days. So, uh, you know, I, I always try to delete this slide, but our marketing folks always seem to push it back in. So a little bit on Accenture, just really three key points to take away. Uh, for those of you who don't know Accenture, we are a leading uh, very large technology and systems integration firm, technology systems integration and outsourcing firm. We also do a lot of open source work, and that sometimes surprises people. So you can see on the slide uh, there that we have the statistic that we have 6,000 people that are, that are very skilled in open source products and many more than that, many more people than that that work around the open source community and do open source development. So it's a big part of our business and an exciting growth area for us as well, working with Red Hat and many of the companies uh, that you all represent in the audience here. The other thing I'd say that's, that's significant on this slide is um, the, the, the tagline, which, which sometimes can seem a little trite, but the tagline of high performance delivered, that really is important to us at Accenture, and it, it just, it, it's a lead into why we think open source is important for our clients and our industry. We're all about helping our clients achieve high performance in their industries and delivering the capabilities, the technology, the outsourcing, the consulting capabilities to help our clients become, success, become more successful and become high performers. And open source really has become a key component of the success in the way we deliver for many of our clients, which is what I'll talk a little bit about here today. So the, uh, I was here last year, so some of you that are, were here last year may remember some of the comments I made last year. And just to tie back to that and set up for uh, you know, a little bit of an update that I'll give you this year, last year I talked about a, a survey that we had just done that talked about the fact that 78% of large global enterprises were using and committed to open source technology in their enterprises. That was interesting in and of itself, but was, what was also interesting was the commitment we saw from the survey to increasing investment in open source to open source spreading to more parts of the business, and to the, the reason we saw behind our customers adopting open source. So they told us, what our customers told us, is they were adopting open source because it was better quality, better reliability, better security, and more flexible, which are interesting reasons, and I think different than many of the reasons that our customers had, had told us a few years ago, and it's really a sign, in my mind, of a coming of age of open source in a big way in the enterprise market, and again, preaching to the choir here for all of us uh, working in the open source community. The other thing uh, you know, that we set out to do last year, uh, that I talked about last year, is an increasing commitment we had to spread open source into more of our offerings that we're taking to our clients, and we're well down the path in that journey, and I'll give you a couple updates on that. And we're also uh, very pleased with where we've gotten working with many companies in the open source ecosystem, and working with uh, Red Hat in particular with a great relationship that we've got. And I think a sign of success of what's happening with open source is just looking at the performance of the companies that are working in the open source arena. So Red Hat, if I got my numbers right, doing a little research before, before the uh, show here, uh, Red Hat, I believe, uh, in the last year, I believe their stock is up about 50%, which is about triple the Dow Jones index. Accenture's up about 30%, which is double the Dow Jones index. So as the economy's been recovering, there's been a resurgence around technology and technology spending and resurgence of, of interest in things like open source to help our clients stay at the forefront of innovation. So let me just give you a few updates on interesting things that, that I see going on in our, in our marketplace. So the first one uh, I'll talk about up there, and the one that's most exciting to me, is innovative business solutions that we're delivering, and I think that many of you are delivering with open source. One example I'll give you under, for an innovative business solution is a retailer, a global retailer, who operates in the low margin segment of the retail industry. It's, a, it's actually in the grocery industry. Margins are very thin and cost is very important, and also growth was very important for this company, and they couldn't grow 
with the in-store systems and point of sale infrastructure that they had. And they needed a cheaper, more scalable infrastructure and more flexible infrastructure for uh, the grocery retail point of sale. So we developed an open source based system for them that we rolled out to 6,000 stores, over 15,000 point of sale locations, dramatically cheaper than, uh, than the solution they were operating to allow them to expand their business in the way that they needed to into new markets. So an example, of, again, of using open source in an innovative way to help them achieve you know, pretty big business ambitions they had and in a way that they couldn't have done leveraging other technology. Another example, or another area that we're seeing a lot of activity in, and Jim just talked at length about this, so I'll keep it brief, but cloud computing is another area, and I agree with Jim, it's a challenge, I think, for this group and for those of us working in the IT industry to define what cloud computing is and how it adds value to our customers. But you know, what I believe and what I see happening is that open source is instrumental in the development of cloud computing. If you look at what the major clouds are running on, it's open source. If you look at where the innovation is happening in cloud computing, it's around open source. So open source is instrumental to the success and future of cloud computing. And it's also, we're also seeing innovative client solutions again in the cloud computing arena. One example I'll give you is a uh, products company that has a, that's a very large uh, global products company that has retail stores as well as a lot of online sales. And they have a large loyalty program and they had uh, stretched the boundaries uh, of growth around their loyalty program based on technology cap capacity and flexibility of their loyalty program. These are the loyalty rewards cards, those kinds of programs. So what we did is we, uh, we re-architected re their, their uh, traditional server-based application, Java-based application, to run in a public cloud using open source technology in a period of several months, uh, dropped the TCO by about 80% and gave them a more flexible architecture with a much better, you know, uh, much lower expense environment going forward, leveraging the cloud. And I think it's those kind of situations where you can deliver value to customers, leveraging new business models around the cloud and leveraging uh, open source technology are going to be what's very interesting for all of us to you know, deliver new solutions for our customers and our and, uh, clients in the industry. The uh, Accenture software is another thing that where we've committed to open source. We have our own software products we sell, and I won't talk a lot about this, but we've, we've been embedding open source technology at the heart of the architecture for some of our, for, for the, for some of our Accenture software products. One example uh, is in our Accenture platform for public service which is an open source infrastructure that we use to deliver public services, social service uh, types, types of applications to state and local governments. And uh, it helps them deliver their mission more flexibly and much more cheaply so that they can really focus more on serving the citizen needs and social needs rather than focusing on the technology is another great example of, uh, of innovation out there. And finally, mobility has been, I think, a really interesting area from an open source perspective. If you look at what's happening with Symbian and changes there, look at what's happening with Android and the growth of the Android market share, uh, it's been a lot of excitement around mobility and embedded software. And that's been a, a growing area for, uh, I think, for many of co the companies in this room and, and for uh, us at Accenture as well, and allowing us to do very interesting things, like for a large automotive manufacturer in Europe, uh, we're Im uh, implementing all the in-vehicle uh, intelligence and infotainment products on Android using open source infrastructure for the real-time delivery of infotainment services in, in the automobiles. And again, you know, tremendous innovation and in, uh, in architecture and you know, putting together very creative technology. So that's some of what we've been up to in the last year uh, with open source and what's been happening uh, and what we've really enabled you know, to happen in the industry through all the, the people in this room and what you bring to bear through your, through your organizations. And so let me just spend a few minutes on what's next, and maybe this will tee up some discussions and some thinking, because uh, I think you'll hear more about some of these themes over the next few days at the, at the Summit in JBoss world. We go through a process every year where we think about our vision, we work with our customers, we have a CIO council, and we have R&D labs around the world, and we go through a process to look at what's coming, what we think is uh, happening with technology. So we went through that. Let me just share some of the highlights with you, and I can send you full research reports, and you can look at, look at our website if you want more. So happy to share more. But let me give you the highlights of what I think is relevant, uh, given what we're focusing on here over the next few days. The, uh, I, I just tee up the segue into the vision to say that the theme is disruptive innovation, and that's what we believe is happening in the industry, disruptive innovation. If you think about space exploration in the 60s. It wasn't an evolution from what was happening in the 50s. It was radical innovation and bold steps and bold moves made with materials technology, uh, zero gravity, life in zero gravity and the biological adaptation to it, orbital dynamics and what it took to, uh, to launch the, uh, the, the, uh, 
the rockets into space, et cetera, et cetera. So it's bold thinking, not evolutionary thinking. And I think we've got a set, a set of forces underway within IT when you look at the, the ever you know, driving curve of Moore's law and Metcalfe's law and everything around it, driving the abundance of, uh, of cheap computing power and network power out there. When you look at the innovation around consumer technology, and all of you that are carrying all these devices around that have ever-increasing inc intelligence, um, and the fact that increasingly IT is looked to as the spot for innovation, particularly as we're coming out of this economic cycle, um, what that all adds up to is, is that IT has the potential to really play a disruptive innovation role within organizations if IT leaders choose to take advantage of it. And we think that's, that's really the opportunity ahead of us with open source with many of the other technologies that are moving fast right now. So let me go through, uh, I'll go really through, it says eight trends, I'm gonna go through four things with, with you very quickly. Data and analytics is the first key trend that I'll, that I'll uh, leave you with, and a couple stats here. For the average business, their volume of data doubles every 1.2 years. That's pretty phenomenal. And the cost of that storage doubles, uh, you know, doubles as well with some price performance improvements. Uh, many of our clients measure their data now in petabytes, uh, and Google, you know, Google processes 24 petabytes a day, so petabyte level challenges are, uh, are very, you know, very problematic for many of our clients. And the so what about this is, you know, that to think about what's the so what, so there's more data, what's the big deal? The so what is that I believe it forces all of us to think differently about how we engineer systems for, for our customers. You need to think data first and analytics first. It's no longer okay to design a system and then say, well, what's my data warehouse strategy? How do I, how do I add on the analytics? How do I buy some analytics uh, packages to add on? It's data and analytics first, and in many cases, data and analytics will drive the architecture of the uh, resulting application you built. And that's a, that's a big change from the way we've designed systems in the past. The second set of trends is around cloud and architecture. And some, some stats here, Amazon, serves up, uh, I believe they have the ability to serve up 250 billion objects right now, and they are 200 billion objects, and they uh, at peak serve up 260,000 objects per second into their cloud. That's pretty large scale. And the software as a service vendors are out there, you know, you know who they are that are providing applications in the cloud it's for CRM and ERP and other applications. And we believe value is moving up the stack from our clients. They want to buy cloud higher up in that stack, and they want to buy applications. The implication of that for all of us is thinking of what we do more as service-centric rather than server-centric. Rather than think about the boxes and the architectures that we deploy, think about the services and the way you interconnect legacy to new capability. And uh, again, a different way of thinking. We've talked about that kind of trend for a while with SOA, service-oriented architectures and things like that. But this makes it real and makes it very important and provides a rationale for continuing to move in that direction. Uh, security is a big deal in privacy. Uh, Symantec says that they were, Symantec's measurements say that there were three billion malware attacks last year. The average hacking incident exposed 260,000 individual identities. Uh, you just, you know, Sony's in the news now with the, the breach that happened there and the, there's a, a new one every month. And uh, the change again that needs to happen here, since the so what is that adding identity and access management and perimeter level security and encryption after the fact doesn't work anymore given the threat levels and what we need to guard against. And when security and privacy become differentiators competitively for your company, it's important to proactively design security in. So a differentiator, for example, will be a company that can architect into their systems the ability to, to uh, shed off denial of service attacks that they don't, get in, you know, they don't get hit when other companies get hit. Proactively thinking about security and dynamic response to incidents will be the, the new bar of success. And then finally, social platforms are the other key trend. How many have a Facebook account? You know, the hands, uh, you're not raising your hands, but no, you've, got, you've all got them. The uh, 600 million on, on Facebook, uh, Twitter, we took three million, it took one, uh, uh, three years, I'm sorry, it took three years to hit a billion tweets. Uh, there's over a billion tweets a week now. Uh, so, the, so, so what's the so what? The so what is how do you mine that tweet stream for new insights about your customers? How do you mine that to, get analytics about your business and how you need to respond to customers. And if you saw the recent story, but the attack, uh, the capture of Osama bin Laden was tweeted, the attack was actually tweeted as was happening by a neighbor in uh, that town in, in uh, Pakistan. 
So how do you mine that, that tweet stream and do more with it? And how do you include social networks in your business processes so you're not just, tweeting, you're not just treating all the social networks as an afterthought, but are integrating them into, a, into your business processes? So anyway, can send you a lot more, but that's, that's where we're headed from a trend perspective and where this is going to go, and I think open source is at the center of it. The reason that open source is critical and all of, all of you in the room and the community and the ecosystem of open source are important is that community-based development is where innovation happens now. If you look at where the innovation is, is going on, it's, uh, it's around com community-based development. So that's where we're going to continue to see the activity, and I think all of us working together are where we're going to continue to drive the bar on innovation in these areas. Cloud isn't going to stop whether you believe in cloud or big data or software as a service, whatever, whatever area that you're looking at. The cloud is important. It's going to continue to be important for our customers given the dynamics that are going on. Open source will be key in there as well. If you get back to the theme I led with of enterprise agility, I think all of this is good news for enterprises, good news for our customers if they can sort through the complexity because it's giving them the agility to run their business, businesses more effectively and back to our vision that we, that we push with our customers to help our clients be high performers by delivering this technology to improve their business. So that's really all, all I have to say. Um, I'm looking forward to the next few days. I hope we have a lot of good discussion on, on a lot of these topics. Uh, I'm, you know, we've, I look forward to this event every year. I look forward to our, you know, our partnership with Red Hat, which is a, a great one into, with, with the partnership we have with many of the companies that attend the conference as well. And I think we'll have a, a great few days of sessions at Red Hat Summit and JBoss World. So thank you for listening to me for a little while. I think we'll get back to the beer quickly that some of you have started on and uh, get on with the rest of the show. Thank you. <laughs>